Hello, people of YouTube. I'm Justin, and welcome to Aquavita Woodworks. Today, Charlie and I are going to be making 10 river-themed bottle openers. These are shaped like little paddles. Uh, I'm going to be using 10 pieces of scrap wood that I have left over from making flags. And the goal is to put 10 of them next to each other on the CNC and cut them all out at once. I don't know if this is going to work because I've never tried it before, but we'll see how it goes. Follow along. All right, so I have my 10 pieces of scrap wood here. Later on, I'm going to use double-sided tape to lay them out on my CNC, probably something like this. Uh, but before I can do that, I need to make sure that they're all the same size. Uh, and you can also see that I have some minor imperfections on the edges. I must have used this as a test piece while routing the edges of something. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna use my table saw to rip these down to five and three quarter inches by 11 inches. And that should be good. my pieces are cut to size and now it's time to stick them to the machine. I'm going to use double-sided tape and place the first one square into the corner and reference the rest off of that. Let's do it. Everything is taped down to my table now. As you can see it's not perfectly aligned in some places but that's okay. I allowed a small margin of error in my design file. At least I think I did. We'll see. Anyway, the first carve now is to use an eighth inch down cut bit to pocket out the groove for this bottle opener hardware. All right, that first part is done. So far, so good. I can already tell that there's gonna be some issues with depths here. Like this board in particular was a little bit lower. If you look closely, you can see that it's lower than the one next to it. So this pocket is gonna be kind of shallow, but to be honest with you, I don't really care. But that will make a difference when I'm doing a V-carve for text later. So I'm trying to figure out how to solve that. I think I might have a solution, but we'll figure it out. Okay, I figured out how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put the double-sided tape on the backs, flip them over where they are, and then once everything's down, I'm gonna sand everything flush. That way when I V-carve the text, they'll all be pretty much the same height. Like I said, these aren't gonna be perfect regardless of what I do, but I think that's the best solution for what I'm dealing with. So double-sided tape, flip them, sand them down, and we'll go from there. Now that everything's sanded, I think I'm ready to do the final carve. This isn't perfect, but I'm not that worried about it because I think that the 60 degree bit that I'm using to carve these texts will allow enough room for error. So the first step is to use an eighth inch down cut to carve this little hole. It'll pocket each one all the way through the bottom, and then it will move on to an advanced V-carve using that same eighth inch bit along with the 60 degree V-bit to carve the state of Massachusetts along with this little star. And then the same 60 degree bit will move into the circle and also carving these letters. I switched up the text on the bottom to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, I think it'll just look nicer. Once that's finished, I'll use a quarter inch down cut to carve the contour of the edges. And I did add tabs onto the sides of these. So wish me luck. Okay, so a few issues with how that went. The first thing is I forgot to assign a toolpath to the circle. That's not a big deal because I can just keep everything as it is and run the V-carve. 
The interesting thing is though that these didn't cut through all the way and I don't understand why. Even the one that I zeroed off of didn't cut all the way through and I know that my toolpaths was set thicker than the stock. I think that my bit slipped at some point but that also may not be true because normally when that happens it plunges instead of getting stuck further up in the shaft. I don't really understand what happened to be honest with you but I'm not that worried about it because I can just use my bandsaw to cut out the perimeter and then use a flush trim router bit to clean it up. Not a big deal. Overall I'm kind of satisfied with how everything came out. So I'm going to run that next toolpath with the V-bit to get the circle that I forgot to program in and then we'll take everything off the machine and clean it up. Running that circle gave me an idea. Instead of using the bandsaw, I'm gonna just rerun this toolpath, and if it did slip, then it'll fix my issue anyway because it'll cut to the correct depth. I might even add a little bit depth just to make sure it goes all the way through. Hopefully that works, so let's see. I'm really glad that I ran that toolpath. Uh, for a few reasons. One, it tells me that my bit did originally slip in my collet, which I'm lucky that it didn't plunge right into my workpiece because that's what normally happens. Uh, another reason is it saves me time on the bandsaw, and also I forgot to assign my tabs that second time around. So these are actually free, and my double-sided tape did what it should, and these will just come off, and all I have to do is clean up a little bit on the edges here, which is not bad. I'm just gonna hit it with the sandpaper, and I'm also gonna round over the edges anyway, so that really doesn't mean anything to me. So overall, very happy that I did that because I think it saves me a lot of time later on. So now I'm gonna round over the edges and clean everything up. Okay, well now I have nine bottle openers to finish because I dropped one, whatever. So I'm gonna use this weeding tool to pick out all the little fuzzies from the letters and the circle. And I'm gonna use the compressor to blow it out. And then I will sand everything to my liking. I'm not really worried about it. And then we're gonna move on to stain, I think. Yeah, stain. All right, let's get picking. All right, so everything is stained now, and I think they look pretty good. Uh, you can see, if you look at this one closely, it has a lot deeper grooves than some of the other ones. So this one is pretty deep, and there's some others that are kind of shallow that look like this. You can see the comparison. I think both are fine. Uh, that's just because my boards were not even as I knew before, but it is what it is. Can't change it now. I think they both look okay. I am happy that I stained them because I think that it makes the letters pop out a little bit more. So I'm going to let these dry overnight and then we'll spray some lacquer on them and start putting in the inserts. Welcome to tomorrow or today. These are dry and it's no longer yesterday. So I'm going to mask up and spray some lacquer. This stuff stinks so make sure you wear that mask and I have my garage door open right now. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with this process and we'll come back when I'm putting the inserts in. Okay, so my bottle openers are now dry. This is what they look like. Not too bad for pieces of scrap wood, I guess. So I'm just gonna flip them over now and use this bottle opener hardware that I got off Amazon. Stick it in the insert, hopefully it fits. Kind of a tight fit. Uh, 
I'm gonna use this old screwdriver that I filed down and poke a hole for the screws. And screw them in. These screws aren't the best, so you might want to replace them if you try this. Or I've seen people put super glue down first. I might do that on the rest of them. All right, I'm just going to do that eight more times, finish the rest of them, and then I'm going to tie a string on and we'll call it a day. I'm all done. I have tied strings to all nine of them and I'm calling it a day on this project. Overall, I'm somewhat happy with how they came out. I would have done a few things differently and I now realize that I need to tram my CNC machine, but maybe I'll make a video about me doing that. Uh, if I were to do these again, I would also use something other than pine because now I'm afraid after dropping that broken one that if you put too much torque on this to open a bottle, the handle might snap. Uh, either way, I guess we'll find out. But if you liked what you saw here today, give it a like on the thumbs up down there and subscribe if you want. I just started this channel and so far I'm having fun. So thanks for watching.